Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Urban Legends video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's do another new entry here. This one though is based on one of your past suggestions. I had to go back about a little over a year ago to look at one of the past suggestion videos and I saw something interesting, something that I could point out here because of this. It has to do with the fact that this used to be an Urban Legend, but now with modern science it can actually showcase, at least to some effect, what it truly is. Is. In this case, some form of living organism rather than, let's say, a tall tale or an urban legend that has mystified people for hundreds of years. So quite fascinating to look at this information today and basically debunk what was associated as something mystical all those years back. And it has to do with this. It's very beautiful to look at. This is the urban legend known as the Milky Sea. So let's go ahead and let's talk about all the fascinating info associated with this now debunked urban legend. So what is this Milky Sea? Well, it's a phenomenon that actually continues to this very day. It's something that happens out there in the open ocean just when the conditions are right. And it's still pretty rare to find it to these days. It's not like you're gonna come across it every single time a ship goes out there. No, it seems like in certain cases, it just has to be picture perfect in order for it to happen. Basically, it's this. If you're out there in the open ocean, in most cases, it's out there way out, like when it comes to being far away from land. If you happen to be at a, at a point at night and you happen to be out there on the ship, you can see something glowing in the far horizon. And when you do so and you happen to come across it, suddenly you're surrounded by what's essentially miles and miles and miles of this pale, milky white glowing waters. In fact, it's supposed to be described as being as far as the eye can see. So this phenomenon, once you come across it, it looks just so beautiful, so amazing to look at because here you are in the pitch blackness of night, suddenly surrounded by, in this case, these glowing waters. In fact, it was described at one point by Jules Verne in one of his tales there, uh, in this case, uh, being the 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, where the submarine Nautilus actually came across it as well. But before that time period, there were so many sailors for hundreds of years that would come across this phenomenon. And the way they would describe it was as, as, as being as if you were walking through or essentially uh, floating through uh, clouds, clouds themselves gliding across, in this case, clouds from the ocean. And whatever this was, it would take a long time to be able to, 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 to pass it because of how huge this stuff was. This isn't something where it's just like a small, like in this case, blob. No, in this case, this is hundreds and hundreds of miles long. So quite fascinating to think that all of this is occurring. I had no idea that this stuff was happening out there in this world that goes to show again just how tiny we are compared to the magnitude of this earth but yes indeed uh they, in fact the most recent encounter occurred back in 1995 at least the most doc recent documented one and it actually led to it being debunked so here's why so ever since that time period hundreds of years all this explanation people wondering what exactly occurred there were a group of scientists then in 2005 that decided to go ahead and see what it was they wanted to absolutely find out this urban legend of the milky sea and take a closer look at it so they went back in time actually to do so and the way they did it was this they used satellite sensors and satellite images to try to confirm the most recent time period that something was encountered. That harkens back to what I was just mentioning there in 1995. Apparently on January 25th, 1995, there was a ship, a British merchant vessel called the SS Lima, that was out there in the Indian Ocean. And they reported this. They stated that on a clear moonless night, about 150 miles east of the Somalian coast, there they saw a whitish glow on the horizon. And then after 15 minutes of streaming straight towards it, that's when their ship was completely surrounded by the familiar milky white color of this milky sea. So once they had that as a pinpoint, they then used a program called the Defense Meter 
Meteorological Satellite Program, and they were able to find satellite images. And lo and behold, they did so. In fact, they found one using a low-level light of some sort there by that location, and they found uh, basically this, like what you're looking at. So you can see the humongous size of this thing because this is, in this case, 250 kilometers long. Can you imagine that? I mean, here you are in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the ocean practically, and you see this and you're completely surrounded by it. You can just totally imagine how sailors must have thought back then, seeing this from eye to eye as far as from one horizon to the other, not being able to get past it probably for a good while, probably for days, considering, you know, how fast or how quickly their ships could go. And so the scientists decided, let's go ahead and let's see if we can actually find out what they're made of. So now we have photographic proof. Let's see if we can find out exactly what this stuff is made of. And interestingly enough, some water samples were collected back in 1985 involving a three-day Milky Sea event, again there in the Arabian Sea. So in this case, they were able to take that sample. Interesting that this water, basically that sample could last for so long. And they find out that there was something within it known as the Vibrio Harvey, which is other, more commonly known as bioluminescent bacteria. That's all it is. This Milky Sea is nothing but a very, very large mass of bioluminescent bacteria. And this stuff, this, this bacteria, basically creates this faint, sustained glow that stays for who knows how long. Because the interesting thing, the interesting twist is this. This bacteria is doing this for one purpose. It wants to be eaten. It wants to absolutely attract fish and it wants to be ingested by those fish. And that's because this bacteria wants to live. I don't know if it's just pure nature or if it's if it's something else entirely different, but it has this instinct that it has to be inside fish. And the only way to do so is it has to glow as much as it can. So that way you can attract the fish. Naturally, fish will do that. Fish will come across a very faint glow and the closer they get to it, suddenly it's a lot larger. And then it's probably just a feeding frenzy at that point then you'll have all these fish eating all this bacteria and the bacteria basically uh, did its instinct it, it, it did its life cycle so now it'll be inside the fish itself so isn't that fascinating isn't that crazy to think that's how nature works out there and the idea is that this just happens somewhere out there in the ocean as is the interesting thing though is that nobody can figure out how the bacteria knows to do this it's bacteria Bacteria. It's the tiniest organisms, one of the tiniest organisms of all. So the fact that these bacteria can all just congregate together, almost colonize a very large portion of water, considering their intelligence, if they're able to do this, that's what seems to baffle the scientists too this very day. So another interesting to note, there is another version of this bioluminescent bacteria, except it's known as bioluminescent dinoflagellate. So another interesting term in that case. But this is a, a, a type of bacteria or type of, of organism that inhabits the same waters, but it only happens whenever there's a red tide and whenever it's hitting, in this case, uh, the shore itself, like it's crashing alongside the shore. In fact, you're looking at a picture of it here. Looks very similar, in other words, to the Milky Sea. The only thing is, though, this happens whenever it's crashing on the shore itself. It's faint spurts. It's, it's all it is. And while the other one, in this case, the, the bioluminescent bacteria that makes up the Milky Sea, can be sustained for a much longer time. So two different uh, organisms, both of them kind of causing the same light, but for different reasons. And then when it comes to their strength and how long they last, that's another big difference associated with them. By the way, if you want to get an idea of how many organisms it takes to produce something that large, in this case, 250 kilometers, I don't know how this was measured, but it takes 40 billion trillion bacteria to be able to create something that large. Isn't that crazy? The idea that so many of these tiny organisms are right there, 40 billion trillion of them, and they happen to be there at that point, all creating the same light. I wonder what it would be like to, to, to do something 
like to come across this type of, of image out there in the middle of the night. I mean, it's already, if you're out there in the ocean, I'm sure some of you have, like whenever you're, you're on a cruise, I haven't been on a cruise, but some of y'all have out there. People always state that, that you can see beautiful lights up there in the night sky because of the fact that there's nothing else surrounding you. There's no cityscape. There's no buildings, no light from the city uh, blocking light from the sky. But here in this case, in the pitch blackness, you would have every everything available to see. So imagine something like this that have coming out from the bottom, in this case from the from the from below yourself, from the ocean itself and the, the beauty of it. So I would totally love to see something like that out there too. But yes indeed this urban legend the Milky Sea pretty much debunked when it comes to science doing so but still the reasoning as to why and how these 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 bacteria are able to do this on their own that still seems to be something that is a mystery. So, But if anybody has any more info, anything else you might have missed, please post those comments below. Isn't that fascinating the way nature works, the way the world is still uh, quite a mystery out there? So if anybody has seen this in person uh, and you want to share your experience on that too, please post those comments too. So, All right, everybody. Thanks again as always. Take care.